This is Isaac with Red Castle Outdoors and we want to create a series of videos explaining how to fly fish. For those of you who are beginners, if this is the first time you've picked up a fly rod, you guys will be able to figure it out. And So today we're going to show you um, how to set up your fly rod first of all and then how to um, put the reel on and then we're going to be, instead of using a fly, we're going to be using some yarn to cast into a bucket. Um, I know it sounds strange, but it's how I learned and it worked really well. I've got a fly rod by Temple Fork Outfitters and I really liked it. It's not a real expensive rod, but it's, it's a quality, quality rod. It's about nine feet long. This breaks down into five pieces. On this uh, part of the rod, and I, I'm sure most rods are like this, but it has a, a nice little blue dot there and then there's a blue dot here. So what you want to do is you want to put that down, bring that right down. You don't want to bring it down so that both of the dots here line up perfectly and then push it down. What you want to do is you actually want to bring it to the side, push down, and then twist until they line up. And I think that's about right. Yep. So they're lined up. So what that'll do is over time that creates a nice tight seal between the two poles. Otherwise, you'll be casting out there and you'll find that half your pole just flies right off. The reel that I'm using is an Okuma and it's a 5-6 weight reel, meaning I can put a um, line on it that's a 5 weight or 6 weight line, the recommended sizes. Depending on whether you're left-handed or right-handed, you'll want to put, uh, make it so that uh, the handle here is either on the left or you can spin it around and put it on the right. Where I'm right-handed, I'm going to be holding the reel, or the pole in my right hand and I'm going to reel with my left hand. So I'm going to put the handle on the left side. There's a little groove up under here that you can see there. Just slide that right up under there. And then find the groove on this adapter piece here and just go ahead and tighten it up. Pretty simple, straightforward. Okay, so now we've got that all set up. And what you want to do is pull your line out. You're going to want to have about six feet of leader is what I usually use for catching trout. The most fly line that you buy comes with this nice uh, eyelet built right into it. So you don't have to really tie a nail knot or anything like that. You can just, you can just, uh, get the leader that has the loop in it and then just do a simple a simple knot. We'll show you how to tie that on in another video. But So it's been my experience that when I've been teaching uh, uh, somebody how to fly fish, the first thing they'll do is they'll grab their line and they'll just have their pole like this and they'll just kind of put the line up through the eyelets. And what will happen is sometimes you kind of lose your grip on the line and it'll fall all the way down through the eyelets. The way to do it is you actually take some of the line itself, not the leader, and you bend it over in a loop and then feed it up. So then what happens is if you drop it, it'll actually get stuck right in the loop. And you'll go ahead and just move it up through the eyelets and rather than trying to fight it and go up, you can just walk down your pole like this. So just focus on the next eyelet. We are going to tie this uh, two inch piece of red yarn onto the end of the leader. You'll just take your your line and cross it over the top like that of the yarn and then hold the yarn in your left hand and then bring this and just do a, just do a simple fisherman's knot and bring it around like this about six times or so five or six and then you'll put it right through the little eyelet that you've created. If I can get it through there. 
There you go. And then pull it tight. Nice and snug. So there you go. Now you've got a you've got the yarn tied onto the end of your leader and we're going to go and cast it into a bucket. Rather than have a hook on the end of the line when you first start out, I think it's good to put the yarn on it um, to practice. Otherwise, you might be snagging the hook into the tree, you might be snagging it, in, snagging it on somebody that's around. Um, you know, it, it just makes it easier to do the yarn. You'll want to try and get uh, your pull in between 2 o'clock and 10 o'clock. So when you're casting back and forth, just practice doing uh, 2 to 10, 10 to 2, 10 to 2. And do that for a little while and you'll notice that the, the line is not bunching up on itself. It's not uh, creating a problem. It's not uh, wrapping around your pole. If you're doing this, you know, you're going way too fast. You want to keep a nice, steady movement. If you can hear it whipping, or uh, snapping, then you're going way too fast. So keep a nice, steady movement, and hold on to the, the line with your left hand. Basically do that for until you're, you get used to it. So I've got a bucket here that's about 14, 15 feet away. And so I'm gonna try and land this yarn into the bucket. It takes, it takes a lot of practice and depending on what the wind is like, you'll have to adjust um, or how long your leader is. So I landed it in the bucket. What we'll start doing is we'll, we'll put that bucket further and further and further away and and try and get as accurate as possible when landing that line. And my, uh, my leader is a little bit uh, coiled. I actually need longer leader. I, I decided to cut off that other line because it was just too short and it wasn't working very well. So now I've got a nice long piece of leader. We're about six or nine feet of leader here. So let's move the bucket further away and make it a little bit more of a challenge. Okay, so I've got my bucket about 30 feet away. I'm still doing my 10 to 2. My line's not bunching up on itself and I'm not having problems with it. If I go too slow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start snagging things and I'm going to start getting my line bunched up on itself. And if I go too fast, then you're losing all your control. I'm, you can start hearing that I'm whipping it a little bit, if you can hear that. And uh, so let's just do the 10 to 2. And now I can start pulling out a little bit of line. As you get more line out, you have to go a little bit slower. The less line you have out, a little bit faster. So I'm, I'm a little bit slower now. And if you notice, when I'm moving my line back and forth, it's more, of, it's more in the wrist. There's not as much action in my arm, but more, more in the wrist. And then you just slowly let it out. See, I've got way too much line out there, and I overshot my bucket. I need to reel in a little bit. And try it again, see how close we get. I've got wind coming from my right and blowing it, so I need to aim. To the, a little bit to the right of the bucket so that I can get kind of have it float in. Right in the bucket. Right in the bucket. So now when you when you know what your distance is, you don't need to put any more line out or, or real line in. You just focus now on just setting it down nice and gentle.
I got it in the bucket, but it wasn't a very pretty landing. So one thing you'll one thing we'll learn a little bit later when we're uh, casting into a pond and we're going to try and catch fish, you want to lay your line out as as smoothly as possible. You don't want to slap the water. So we got to work on that and kind of get uh, see it, it coiled up a little bit. That was much better. Right in the bucket, right there. So I just do that as many times as you feel like you need until you can really learn or really get it down. And even for me, who's, I mean, I've been fly fishing for, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I've been fly fishing for about 10 years now. So now we're getting really far out there, so I'm having to uh, really put out a bunch of line and go a little bit slower. You want to wait till your line is at the right point before you pull it back, otherwise, see watch what happens with this much line if I start. You don't want this. This is, you're going to end up with problems. So you want to, you want to wait for the proper time you watch your back cast see the problem i just had is i pulled it forward too soon you gotta wait till it hits the right point this is a lot of line i don't normally have this much line unless i'm fishing on a lake i got pretty close well, let's try that again. Let me focus on what I'm doing here. I have a little bit too much line out there, so I'm going to reel a little bit in and try it again. Oh, that's pretty close. If you can, if you can get uh, within a couple of feet of the bucket, that one I think landed right in it. If you can get within a couple of feet of the bucket, you're going to get close enough to where the fish are going to bite it. That one pretty close too. The great thing is if you overshoot it a little bit, like if you're fishing on a, on a stream or a river or a lake, and you overshoot it, you can just pull your line in just a little bit and you'll probably get the fish so the point is, is it's all about accuracy you want to try and get to want to get it down to where you're you're able to get as close to the to where the fish are as possible so just keep practicing and practicing don't give up i know it's it's pretty frustrating in the beginning uh when i first started out i was really i got really frustrated but um just just Hit that 10 to 2 and just watch your line and make sure that uh, you're, you're not going too quickly or too slowly. And you just watch your, watch your line as it coils out behind you and bring it back at about the right time. So it's, it's something that uh, there is a science to it, but at the same time, it's all about feeling it. you got to feel how the line is moving. And once you get the feel of it, then, uh, then you'll do really well. So. Uh, I think uh, now we'll throw a hook on it and catch some fish. There you go. Nice.